Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. In today's video, I'm going to be answering some of your VR questions. The questions are based on questions that I've been receiving lately, either through email or through the YouTube channel or through my Discord channel. I appreciate the fact that you guys have different levels of experience in VR in the sim. Depending on your experience with the sim, you might want to jump around to the different questions and just listen to things that you might find interesting or that you might want to learn more about. As the episodes continue, I'll get more and more updated with the different settings, and I can try and give my thoughts on more specific questions people have got about their own PC setups. So we'll start out with the first question. Why are people getting different results in VR with the same PC specs? This is probably one of the most common questions that people ask me, is how come you're getting a certain level of performance with your PC, but I've got a much lesser performance and I've got the same specs as you, the same machine and everything. Now the problem is there could be a million and one reasons why the PC isn't running it the same as another computer with the same spec. It could be simple things like, is your C drive full? Is your hardware set up properly? Are the graphics cards up to date? It could be that you've got certain software running on startup and you're not quitting them as you're running the simulator. And those are just a few potential problems. To answer the question, I think you can set up the sim as much as possible in-game with all the settings that you might see on the internet from other YouTubers or myself. But you've got to make sure that the PC is in prime condition as well, I think. I also think that simple fixes like the way you start the sim up, the order you do things in with the VR and the sim, especially with the Quest 2, I found that. But recently, both headsets, the Reverb G2 and the Quest 2 that I've got, work almost seamlessly. I think it's because the software has been optimized much better than it was. I do think this is going to be an ongoing question. And like I said earlier, I will be tackling more specific questions as the episodes go on. And on to the next question. Which in-game settings have the most impact on performance in VR mode? This is a much debated question and I've made several videos looking at these settings. And what I first want to say is that every setting counts. So the first one being the render scaling, which is an obvious one, and that changes the resolution. So that's going to have a heavy impact on performance. As I go down the list, I'd say the settings that most affect performance in my system are the terrain level of detail and the object level of detail. They heavily impact the performance. I tend to keep these under 150, but again, I'm not saying this is correct or not. I'm just saying how it works with my system. The buildings and the trees and the grass and the bushes obviously have a slight impact. I'd say the buildings have the most impact out of them. I would say one of the settings that has the most impact on performance is the volumetric clouds. And we all know how important clouds are, but this is a setting that you can play with depending on where you are and what you're doing. As we keep going down the list, I'd say another setting that has a major impact would be the ambient occlusion. This is a setting that I turn down to low or medium or even off sometimes. It seems to really impact the way the VR runs, so I tend to keep this setting down. Another much discussed setting is the glass cockpit refresh rate. Now, some people swear that if you have it set at high, it's better performance. If you have it set at low, it's better performance. I've tried lots of different ways and I'm getting different results. So I'm not really sure about that setting, but that definitely has an impact. But what's more important, I think, to think about is not just the individual settings, but actually the combinations of settings. That's how I'm finding that I'm dialing in properly with mine, is that I'm thinking about settings that work with each other. So if I've got volumetric clown set at ultra, I'm going to pull down the ambient occlusion to off and try and balance it out. And again, I know it's very technical and almost a bit boring to talking about settings all the time, but I think it's important that if people really want to know how to dial in their settings, that they actually understand that settings are balanced. Okay, it's all about getting a balance of performance and visuals. So those are some ideas for the in-game settings. But again, definitely try balancing the different settings. I do think it depends on where you're flying and what you're flying in the way these settings impact the performance. Another question that people are asking me lately is, does changing the render scale to 200 in PC mode really improve VR? Now, this is really a hotly debated question. You may have seen my previous videos about this and some other YouTubers have covered it too. The official forum is full of people's feedback. So if some people are getting extreme changes in visuals, things are much more clear and vivid, and other people are reporting no changes whatsoever. When I first tried doing it, I had no differences in performance, no difference in visuals, so I didn't really think it was much of it. And I kept messing around with the settings, and eventually it clicked and I got the difference and I saw it. The differences I noticed are the saturation in the colors and the clarity. Although I don't have a definitive answer for this, I do believe there is some kind of connection between the PC settings and the VR settings. And I think some people's PCs are just picking up the different settings in a different way. Again, I don't understand it, and it's beyond my knowledge. 
Um, but all I can say is that I witnessed it and I continue to witness it in VR. I've tried doing VR in the lens shots to try and make videos to show you, but it just doesn't, it, I can't see the difference in that when you're doing it through the actual camera. I'm still trying to think of ways to show this. You can see some clear footage of this as well on the VR Pilots channel as he made a good video about it. And now for our final question for today's episode. Do you think Sim Update 5 will improve performance for VR users? My answer to that would be I hope so. But generally speaking, I do believe it will have a good impact on the VR performance, as the development team did say in the latest update. However, the amount of performance improvement remains to be seen. I think it will be hardware and settings dependent, much like it is now, but I think the optimization in VR will be much better. But guys, do remember that it is a work in progress, and during the live stream they did say they'll be working on it throughout 2021 into 2022. So if it's not a huge boost in VR, I'm sure it'll be something that keeps us happy until those further optimizations are done. Like I said before, I will be experimenting extensively with the new update as soon as it's released, and I'll be sharing my findings with you guys, hoping that it will help you dial in your own systems as best you can. Anyway, guys, that's it for the first episode. I hope you find that helpful. I'll continue with episode two with more updated questions. I just want to say thanks for answering the questions and the polls in the community tab. It's really helpful to make these videos. So we'll be looking at that feedback and making more specific solutions to people's problems. And hopefully that will help others as well. Anyway, guys, as always, if you like the content, please like and subscribe. In the meantime, take care and stay safe.